This is for 499 TESOL over your discussions about uh, the town you grew up in, your hometown. And we basically, this is Nebraska laid out here. We've got everything from uh, Mark, um, not Mark, um, we got Scott's Bluff. I'm trying to keep track of who everybody is. Um, we got Arapaho, Lexington, um, a lot of Lexingtons, Elkhorn and Omaha, Grand Island, we got two people in Grand Island, and we got Michael Gade from Scott's Bluff, and I'm trying to see if there are others. I know we got a Lincoln in here. Jasmine, you're from Gibbon. So we got pretty much a really good cross-section of Nebraska. Now these are very well written and interesting. I'm gonna just tell you some of the things that I've seen in these, just going over them very quickly. I took some notes. Um, just a bit of a summary. This is a good exercise, so you might think about this if you're in the ESL class. You could do that cultural map I've mentioned, and if, I, if you don't know what that is, I will send you the information on that and show you some examples. But uh, um, I got some really good, uh, what I learned is this. There's a Cuban restaurant in Grand Island that's really good. Um, El Salvadoran, Guatemalan, Mexican food in Grand Island. A lot of the traditional, and I won't say white, but maybe the majority, a lot of people traditionally went to Dairy Queen. Although in some places, people are going to restaurant, regular restaurants rather than anything that's fast food. Although Dairy Queen says it's fun food, okay? At least that's what my ice cream cone says and I get it on my diet once or twice a week. Um, things that I found very interesting uh, in Lexington, and I knew this from uh, stuff on people's cars, Mishua Khan, I think I'm saying that right, Mishua Khan, uh, in, in, Mex in Mexico, down central western Mexico, is um, very closely connected to a lot of people in Lexington. So I know there's a restaurant, says Mich Restaurante or something, Cafe Michoacan in Lexington, uh, kind of on the east side of town on Highway 30. Um, of course, I'm from Lexington, so I'm really familiar. The Pupuseria, which is El Salvadoran food, I believe, but we also have shops in Lexington, they're say Guatemala. And uh, so you can buy stuff from a number of different countries in Central America. It, and, and then of course we've got Somali, uh, a restaurant downtown. And we even have a Somali kind of a store you can buy African products. And I mean, when I say African products, you got everything from, from Qurans to uh, clothing, uh, I remember in one of those, we uh, there was a guy in there that he was busy cutting goat meat in the back. He had a goat hanging up or a carcass of it. So it's kind of like, it's really very familiar to me as the mom and pop stores. When I was a kid, there used to be lots of little stores, not big, you know, supermarkets. But even in small towns, there'd be a little market, a little store about every seven or eight blocks and somebody would have their own little store and they'd have meat and butter and eggs and things like that and sometimes fresh vegetables. Um, but that's really a pattern I saw repeated in Lexington because I'm from Lex, so when I talk about Lexington with some of you, uh, Berdiana, Viviana and um, Jennifer and um, Alejandra, so I share that with you, um, that we are from the same place, uh, Cecilia, I think. I think Cecilia, you're, yeah, you're from Lexington. So, and you're doing your student teaching now. And I wanted to know if you're in Lex, I forgot. But that's really cool. I hope all is going well with you. So we got my Lexington people with me. And um, I, my neighbor is Rosario. And he has, um, I forgot the name of it now, Rosario's restaurant. And my wife really likes the tacos from there. Uh, we all sometimes go to uh, 
when we actually go to the Chinese place, although I like, I think China High is the one we go to, but sometimes uh, the, the Chinese restaurant downtown Lexington. I've not been to the Somali one, but I know they do cook. It's kind of called Ethiopian food, if I remember correctly. Um, but um, so I was really pleased because uh, many of the things you mentioned here are very familiar to me. You, they did add a Runza to Lexington. And Runza is kind of German fast food, if you can imagine. Um, that's my theory. I, I assume Runza is some, some kind of a German variant of fast food. Um, I've not eaten a lot of Runza, but I notice in Lex it's busy in the daytime, but not so much at night. So it's probably more popular with a certain group of people that are mainly around the daytime. Um, but we have a lot of taco trucks and things like that. So that made it fun. Um, then I noticed the variation. We also have the Central Gibbon and Hannah, you're from, oh wait, that's Omaha. I'm trying to find the Central Nebraska one, which would have been Caitlin. I think we had Caitlin, you're at, um, Caitlin, you're in Central City. And this is more like the Central City, you know, is a lot like the town. Actually, it's more small town than where I grew up, even when I was a kid. You, Nebraska seems to keep some of its small town stuff. And what is that kind of stuff? Well, it's having the little, uh, they have this at Lexington, no, but they usually, like in uh, Minden, they have a, 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 a an opera house, or they have a theater down, downtown that people have kept open. Uh, either Central, uh, I'm not sure if it's Central or the other one where you have shows there uh, or used to be a silent movie theater even. I really, that's really important stuff to me. I'm kind of nostalgic. I like the idea of keeping the history going. Um, I'm kind of skipping around. We got Lexi here at Junietta, am I right? Looks like Juanita misspelled somehow. But Junietta and then right uh, with that is uh, Pablo is in Hastings and um, yeah the Blue Moon Coffee Company in Hastings um, baseball which I know you have kind of a professional semi-professional team there in the summer college kids that want to play summer ball I assume with wooden bats um, the uh, but I'm, I'm uh, Kool-Aid, obviously, Hastings famous for Kool-Aid. You have the IMAX theater. Uh, that's not in here, but I know about that. And you have a museum of some kind down there. I'm not quite sure. And every town has this little, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. you said Hastings was very industrialized for most of its history, which is interesting because I never thought about it that way. Uh, but I know there were, it, it, Nebraska was famous for German population. And sometimes the German population, you get people that are in a, into engineering or building or tool, very effective with tools, not just blacksmiths, but maybe they started. I know some small towns that even have uh, bicycle shops and things like that where they actually produce stuff in the old days. Of course, by scale, they don't do that now. Now, Michael, I don't know you real well, but I've been enjoying your presentation. You write about you know, there were a community of Japanese and uh, there's Mexican influence in Scott's Bluff way back. And uh, of course, that's a totally different part of the state. It's like, it's almost like another state out there. I know the distance is tremendous because I have been out there. Uh, you have Chim Chimney Rock and Lake, Lake Minotaur. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, um, a really strong sense of small town there. And like some small towns, you have uh, breweries. Um, I always think when you get out to Western, uh, Scott's Bluff, you're really getting into the West. It seems like the sky opens up, the land opens up, and you feel like you're entering into something gigantic, which is the West. And it opens up as you get out and go past North Platte, and you start seeing the flatness of the land, and, and the sky just gets bigger and bigger. So uh, I enjoyed that. And remember, people should, if you're teaching, uh, I know it's not TESOL 
but in multicultural, I always talk about the Japanese heritage in Western Nebraska. It's, that's so strange. People don't think about that. We had a Japanese family in Lexington too a long time ago. I knew some of them. Um, I think they've all left now or passed away, moved on after they raised their kids. Um, Grand Island, um, that would be Isabel and Rosalina talking about Grand Island. And you mentioned Rosalina, the Cuban restaurants. Uh, you have a Popeyes, which I've never eaten at. I know that's kind of a Southern fast food, I guess. Um, sports is a big deal. Um, a lot of restaurants in Grand Island. Of course, you have horse racing there, which is really different. I'm not, not into that, but I'm scared of horses. I fell off a pony as a child, and I never got back on anything with four legs unless it was a large dog. Um, but uh, I noticed in Grand Island, uh, Isabel, you mentioned they had 29% uh, Hispanic and uh, African American, or maybe African, 2.46%. And 1% Asians, but by number 610, I know there's some rest of the Asian businesses there. Um, a lot of traditional stuff is blended in. Uh, one thing I noticed in looking at these, and you'll notice, is that you can play on what people share and what they share, even though soccer has now become the more major sport for younger kids and even older kids. Uh, you still have softball and football. And I was really taken with. Uh, um, with uh, Carlos's description of growing up in Arapaho, it wasn't easy. Uh, you joined a lot of sports and played football, and uh, and you had to make your own way. And I think of all of these, most of you seem to have had a pretty ideal, easy. No, I wouldn't say perfect. And there may have been some issues with people, I wouldn't as they call racism, but sometimes I would call it that. Um, but I noticed that uh, the mo one of the most interesting ones was Carlos's. I really enjoyed uh, reading this. Uh, this is almost a picture of, of, of growing up and, and kind of dealing with, uh, dealing with a lot of conflicts. And it was very well written. It's the first one in the list. I don't know how many of Several of you commented on his and wrote about it, but it was very, very impressive. Um, it's almost ideal if you ever find yourself in a small town teaching and you're dealing with a, a majority population that's different. Carlos's story here would be a good one just to, to use. I wouldn't use his last name with it, of course. You want to keep some privacy, but um, I think it made a difference. Now, Lincoln is interesting. McCare wrote about Lincoln. I think you're the only one from Lincoln, if I get this right. Um, um, but uh, McCare, you wrote about uh, Lincoln being, uh, you're either a bleedy, bleed Husker Red or you're a bad fan. I would be a very bad fan. Uh, although I have to say, I'm very impressed with Scott Frost, and I think he's going to do for Nebraska what Bill Belichick did for the New England Patriots. I just get the feeling he's the unique kind of guy that will build his own team and it'll be a, a, an incredibly efficient team. And it's kind of miraculous that Wood River produced this young man who's going to be a dominant co coach in the future. I just hope he doesn't go to the pros right away. Um, so I'm enthusiastic about the Huskers, although I'm not typically a Nebraska fan. Um, people love to socialize in Lincoln, you mentioned, and I know that. I have a lot of friends there. Uh, there's a lot more freedom. It's not, you know, the bigger towns here, Omaha, Elkhorn, that you mentioned here, uh, Delaney, is that it sounds like you, you still have a lot of small town, but you have uh, a lot of fun things to do in a big town but you're not constricted. There's not a, not quite as much about everybody knowing your business, which I can see in most of these, what, regardless of what community you're in, Lexington or probably Scotts Bluff, that people know your business. And gossip is very powerful. Uh, I don't know if there's a culture where there isn't such a thing as gossip, but that's really how we get information. People speak badly of gossip. You shouldn't gossip or something. Well, I guess you shouldn't lie about people, or maybe you shouldn't spread too many stories. 
but it still is interesting your your take on this this was a very good little assignment um Oh, by the way, you mentioned uh, sushi and Vietnamese. I happen to know in Lincoln, I have a friend over there just crazy about the Thai food. And um, there's a section, I forget in Lincoln, but but where they have a lot of restaurants. So I've been to the Hispanic ones. Um, but I know that the my friend that goes to the, I'll just say it's Thai or Vietnamese or something, that they have incredible places to eat down there and diverse culture. So I've always had a very uh, high, uh, uh, ex high opinion of Lincoln as a kind of up and coming place, an interesting place. Um, and you had 33% minority population in Lincoln, which is huge compared to most of, well, I, most towns, but obviously there's several that are very much higher. You know, Lexington is 68% Hispanic or more. And um, it's interesting. I don't think about it, you know. I guess I'm, technically I'm a minority in Lincoln, but I, I never really think about it. Um, Anyhow, I just wanted to share this with you. I don't want to talk too long. Um, you had, uh, that's kind of the way I'm going to be doing these is rather than call you up and, or write you a little note on each one, I'd rather kind of paint a bigger picture. And I just want to congratulate you. These were very well done. And I'm trying to catch up on some stuff. So this one's done. You get credit for it. And I appreciate it very much. It was good stuff. I learned a lot about uh, Elkhorn, which is a place I didn't know anything about Delaney. And it was, uh, yeah, you had parties and you have, uh, everybody has their kind of special thing. I know little towns like Eustis Farnham have Juneteenth, which is a German festival. And I know Holdridge has their Swedish days sometime in June, I guess, or like that. And so everybody has some of their little festivals. They have a multicultural festival in Grand Island. Um, that's quite a nice little thing. Um, and I would like to know what this drink is. This coffee drink they have is a passage into teenhood that Pablo mentioned in Hastings. Something chocolate. Kind of weird name for chocolate. I didn't quite know what that meant. Interesting stuff. Okay, well, thanks, and this is The Dude, and I will talk to you later.